Hi guys, I'm Laura. And I'm Freeze. So Freeze and I are sitting here having lunch and we just started having a conversation and I thought that it might be an interesting conversation to have as part of our vlog series because um, I think a lot of you out there might be interested in the topic that we're talking about. And what it is, is I said to Faris, uh, I feel that a lot of kids in her generation have anxiety and depression or some form of mental health struggle. Yeah, mental health struggle. And so we started sort of talking about why we think that is and uh, we haven't yet had this conversation. We're having it now. So <laughs> we thought it would be interesting to just uh, turn on the camera and have this conversation with you guys. So what are your thoughts? What, what, what do we kind of start talking about? Yeah, well, I think there's a lot of things that contribute um, to it. But I think that one of the things and one of the more interesting things and nuanced things is like technology and internet usage. Um, yeah, I think internet, kind of thing. I, I think for sure. I mean, my generation had had mental health issues for sure. It just wasn't maybe as talked about, but I almost feel like it's it's worse now. And uh, we started talking about, I grew up not without the internet. So I don't know how to parent a child who has access to the internet. Don't get me wrong, that sounds terrible. <laughs> of course, I know how to parent her as far as like, we talk about internet safety, we talk about, you know, internet usage. Uh, I'm not as strict, I know, on internet use as other parents because Fries and I have always had a really uh, open dialogue about it. And I remember one time we were having issues and we kept threatening to shut off the internet <clears throat> at midnight. So she wouldn't have access to it throughout the night, uh, which to me was very reasonable. And what, what, did you, what was your response to me? If I'm feeling upset about something at night, let's say, it's midnight, I'm not gonna go upstairs and talk to mom, wake up mom and dad and be like, mom, I'm sad, you know? So my way of connecting to the outside world, connecting to my friends, connecting to people that I know is through my phone. So if I wanna talk about something in the middle of the night, if something's bothering me in the middle of the night, I can message someone and someone is gonna be awake. One of my friends, someone, a helpline even, they're going to be awake. They're going to be on. I'm going to be able to talk to someone at any point that I need to. Yeah, so that made a lot of sense to me. She's very logical and can argue her point very clearly. <laughs> but that made a lot of sense to me because I know a lot of parents take their kids' phones away. And she's saying, you know, a lot of the anxiety does happen at, at night when you're kind of alone. Um, and I know that people out there are going to say, well, you know, if they don't have access to it, then they'll just go to sleep. But it's not always the case. So it just made a lot of sense to me. But the irony was, and kind of part of the reason why I wanted to uh, to sort of bring you guys into this conversation or to hear this conversation is we were saying that I, because I don't have experience the way a teenager has experience on the internet, I don't really know the best way to navigate the whole mental health issues surrounding it. Um, whereas, you know, when you grow up as a parent, you and you went to like bars or clubs um, and got yourself into maybe some unsafe situations, I can then convey that to her. Like, look at this is what happens when you go out, you need to be safe because of based on the experiences that I may have had, but I don't have experience growing up as a teenager with the internet. So yeah, I, you know, I don't know kind of how to navigate these waters. Whereas when she has kids, she's been there, she's lived it. So she will almost be able to better parent a child who's growing up with this type of technology. And I found it very interesting what she said to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, what did you say? To me, Maurice? <laughs> well, I was talking about how I think um, most of the parents, if not all the parents that are parenting like teenagers nowadays, Gen Z, anyone who's really aware enough to talk about their mental health, hasn't really grown up with internet, hasn't really grown up with um, like devices and, such and such and i think mom has although she is more like liberal with with um use and not taking it away at night has done a really good job especially when we were younger um like talking to us and monitoring use and being able to like keep us safe from things that um are dangerous out in the world because i've heard a lot of like horror stories um about people having really bad experiences as kids um with creepy people on the internet 
Um, and so that is one thing that I will credit to my mom that she did a really Thanks. good job helping protect me and my brother from anything unsafe on the internet. I've always been of the mind of you don't necessarily restrict something that kids have access to, but you teach them how to be safe about yeah. it. Because I think that that's better than even. Yeah, the real thing is technology is a resource. It's a resource for your kids. It's a new thing um, to you, but it's it's a, a lot for a lot of us, a big chunk of our lives. And um, it's very helpful at times. It can really help with education. It can really help with that kind of thing. So I think that technology as a whole is a good thing. And I think that kids should have access to education. But I think that when I have kids... Access to education. Or access to uh, <laughs> technology, I mean. Obviously, access to education, but yeah. access to technology. But I think when I have kids, I'm going to have, especially at a younger age, a pretty restricted um, type kind of like access to their technology um <laughs> i'm gonna make sure that they're um like monitoring their use very um closely making sure that they're only on approved websites and approved um like watching approved videos approved tv shows um and making sure that they're not using their <laughs> technology too much because okay so can i start implementing this with you now no why uh, <laughs> see this is the thing that's so frustrating is that because well for me i think but when i try and restrict <laughs> anything because the thing you is you get mad and feel that i'm violating your let me speak once i have a teenager though i think that i am going to give them more like unlimited access not unlimited but like pretty much unlimited access because I feel like once you're a teenager once you're my age you can kind of make those critical decisions and I do want to make sure I do have an open dialogue um about things but I think once you're a teenager and once you're older like I'm 15 so once you're able to kind of get grips on the world it's really helpful to be able to have um your technology as something private um, and being able to have that like privacy. Um, so I think that as kind of when my kids are younger, I'm going to make sure that they're very monitored um, and restricted. But I think that <laughs> once they get older and once they probably turn 12, 13, 14, um, I'm going to like slowly start to give them more unlimited access because I feel like it's, it's very important to have um, that tool of connection and communication with people. I get it. I just, I, sorry, the reason why I'm sitting here struggling so hard is because Bruce and I have had issues about her feeling that we don't trust her if we ask to restrict her usage. And so, okay, here, Freeze, you, <laughs> trying to think how I can say this, you, so teenagers are, um, not rational or logical by nature. We've had this conversation, right? Yes, yes, of course. So how do you how do you give your child freedom of total of access if you're not sure they're going to be they're not they're not mature enough, they're not logical enough, they're not emotionally regulated enough. Well, I think just having um an open dialogue and showing your kids that you can trust them, so they should trust you. Um, so things like um, constantly going through your kid's phone is, I find for me, I've had friends who their parents always go through their phone. And when you constantly go through your phone like that, it doesn't make your kid a better kid. It makes your kid a better liar. It makes your kid better at hiding things from you and they're not going to want to talk to you about anything and they're not going to want to have an open dialogue about things so showing demonstrating kids that you can trust them and that they can trust you to talk to you about things and be able to come to you um if there's anything that's upsetting them if there's anything that's wrong or um anything that like they should think that they should consult you on or you think that they, you should consult them on. And I do think that you should be checking in with your kids and saying like, how's this going? How's that going? But I think that especially, I think that once when you have a young child, I think going through and monitoring um, their use is a good thing. But once your child gets to be like 12, 13, 14, 
a teenager, I think that going through your kid's phone, um, unless they've done something atrocious, uh, can feel really violating and can feel, because this, your phone is not only your communication device, but it's all your friends' communication devices. And it's their way for you to communicate with them, for them to communicate with you. So it not only feels like you violated your child, but your child feels like you violated that connection that they have with their friends. You know, like when you were a kid, your conversations with your friends, your stupid me things that you've sent to your friends, your conversation, not sent, but like things that you've said to your friends, conversations, you said them to each other. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, like, okay. imagine if your parents had a recording device and could listen to every single conversation you ever had with your friends when you were a kid. No, I know. You wouldn't like that. that. No, no. So it's true. the same thing with if I'm texting my friends, I don't necessarily want someone looking in and seeing everything that I'm texting to them, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So I think, I think two things, three things, maybe advice that we can give you or from our experience uh, and advice that Grace can give you when, when she's a future parent. <laughs> but um, we, for, before I say that, before I say the advice is, I think we should do a separate video on communicating with your teen because a lot, I think a lot of parents try and communicate with their teen based on the way they want to be communicated with. Whereas we had to discover ways to communicate with Therese that was comfortable for her um, on her terms. And we'll talk more about that in another video. Cause I think that is a whole mm -hmm. uh, communication is another can of worms. Yeah. So we will do another vlog on that. But for now, I think the number one thing is when you do give your kids access to the internet, when they're younger to have very clear defined limits. Yeah. Um, I know they have like YouTube kids or whatever. Yeah. So I think being, but um, then there are some videos that aren't on YouTube kids that are still for kids, but yeah. But yeah. yeah, but I think at, like, especially at a very young age, like three, four, five, you know, um, well, yeah, for sure. Very young. Yeah. But like, it, <laughs> it's easier to set up mm -hmm. restrictions than to take them away. Yeah. Right. It's so much harder to take away. And I think that you should, when your kid is younger, um, I think that you should, it, it's, 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 I think it's easier to, um, give a lot of restrictions and then slowly take them away as your kids get older mm -hmm. than to give them less restrictions and then kind of realize, whoa, 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 I need to put more restrictions because your kid is not going to like that. It's really hard on your kid when you put more restrictions. So I think starting yeah. off as more restricted and then as they get older and more mature, as you have more of an open dialogue and are able to kind of assess their maturity mm -hmm. that you can then. Like, I know that, like, you can set up, like, parental controls and, like, lock, like, you can't search these certain search terms or whatever. Um, so I think, I think that would be a good thing Definitely. for when your kid is young, like, up to the age of, like, eight, nine, ten, that type of thing. Yeah. And then um, having an open dialogue about internet use and safety. Uh, your kids aren't always going to like the conversations that you have. I know sometimes Grace and I have conversations and it just makes her mad. <laughs> Um, because she doesn't like what I'm saying to her because she either knows it and she's like, oh, stop it. Or she's like, I would never, I would never. But I think that it's your job as a parent to still have those conversations that can be uncomfortable. And we will talk to you more about being able to communicate those conversations. And then I guess the third one is um, you have to, I guess, show your kid trust in order for them to trust you like yeah. I think trust is a two trust way is a two-way street. street so yeah. if if you show your kid that you can trust them it's going to be a lot easier for them to trust you yeah but I think this whole world of internet safety and internet usage and anxiety and mental health among teens are it's it's really hard it's really hard everyone I know is struggling and you know Freeze has struggled and luckily we've got a really great therapist that has been helpful um, but yeah, it's, you're not alone if you're experiencing this, there's a lot, a lot of people. So yeah, we just, I guess, wanted to talk about it. And I guess if you have any topics you want us to talk about, uh, yes. as a mother and additionally, and team, additionally, if your child ever has mental health struggles, it is not your fault. Oh, Likely it is not really, your fault. That's Almost really every time say, it is not your fault. Like, so I feel like a lot of parents, <laughs> when their kid comes to them, point. 
um, with mental health struggles, it's not your fault. It's not, you haven't probably messed up as a parent. You just need to, <laughs> <don't cry. laughs> you just need to do what you can to help them now because you can't change whatever has happened to your child. And I, I don't think that feeling guilty um, about something that likely is a genetic thing most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really good point. And thank you for saying that from a teen perspective, <laughs> because ugh, parent is a ticket out to guilt and you do tend to feel guilty a lot of times. Um, so yeah, thank you for saying that for, <laughs> for everybody. Um, but as well, like if your teen comes to you and is, is, um, sorry, my phone all of a sudden ran, ran storage. out of storage. So we had to delete some. Anyway, what I was saying was that if your teen comes to you and it seems like they're struggling or is trying to hint that they're struggling or outright says they're struggling, um, you know, take them seriously and try and... I think it's good to check in with your kid and just say, yeah, like, how are you feeling? Just ask um, if they're struggling because it might be really, it's, it's really hard as a like mentally ill person yeah. to communicate with others that you're mentally ill. Yeah. Um, so. No, it's hard, especially when you're knee deep in depression. It's hard to say, I'm struggling. Can yeah. you help me? It's so. really hard to say that you're struggling. So checking yeah. in and being like, is everything okay? Um, having that option of offering a therapist if they need it mm -hmm. um, is always good because it's, it's hard to ask a yeah. lot of the time. So being able to and offer. As a teen, it's hard to even know what you need yeah. or know the type of help. So yeah, that's a good point. And we will do a vlog on um, communicating with teens because we have had our issues and we have kind of come to really a good, I feel, a communication system that uh, we have in place. But we'll talk about what we do when it comes to communicating with her and making her feel comfortable. So thanks for joining us for our lunchtime chat. And um, yeah. subscribe to our channel. Subscribe. So you'll be notified <laughs> when we post more videos. All right, guys. Bye. Bye.